Hear ye, hear ye. This court is now in session. Luckily, I've only had to hear that once when I had a speeding, well, it was actually a speeding ticket. It was a ticket for failure to put on that little sticker on your tag and driving with an expired license for like seven or eight months when they finally pulled me over. But it was an interesting time to go sit in the courtroom there in Withville and watch folks come up and down. You know, when you look at a courtroom scene on TV, you've always got the little place over beside the judge, the witness stand. I guess, well, I guess I've seen it on both sides in some of the movies and stuff. And the witness comes up, they place their hand on the Bible, they raise their hand and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Do they still do that, Kenny? Your, your job leads you into the courtroom quite often. Not on the Bible anymore. Just raise your hand and, and make that kind of statement. Well, you know, the person that's doing that is a witness, most likely. They have seen the crime or they have some factual knowledge about the, the situation, and they're there to reveal the truth. They're there to say, this is what I've seen or this is how I can interpret the, the data from the, the autopsy or the crime scene or whatever. And so their job is there to be truthful. Their job is there to help the court decide and understand what is going on. When we look at this particular passage from Hebrews, we're looking at a passage that begins by talking about the fact that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, when you think about that, what's really being talked about there? What is it that we're trying to, to say when we say we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses? Well, on the one hand, we have to understand that in the early church, there was this understanding that we, uh, as followers of Jesus Christ, were witnesses. We were there to witness to our faith. When you join the United Methodist Church, you say that you will support it through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. You say that you're here to tell the truth about who Jesus Christ is. And so when we think about that great cloud of witnesses, we're thinking about the men, the women, the children throughout all the ages who have made their profession of faith in Jesus Christ have witnessed faithfully to him. Some may have met the death uh, through martyrdom. Others may have lived long and healthy lives uh, just telling folks about Jesus and about his love. But we are surrounded by that cloud, those men, women, and children that have died and gone on to glory before us as well as those men, women, and children that surround us now. Witnesses. Witnesses to the power and to the presence of Jesus Christ. We come together today to look at and to hear the witness of some other people. Uh, really, we're here today on this All Saints Sunday to remember and to understand that four of our own are making witness today. Two of them, Jamie and Andrew, have already made their professions of faith and been baptized. That was last summer down at the river. Uh, Addison and Daniel have already been baptized as infants, and they come to make a public profession of their faith today. They come to become part of that great cloud of witnesses so that years from now they can look back and they can remember and say, yes, on that day, I decided to become a follower of Jesus Christ. On that day, I decided that I was willing to stand up and that I was willing to say that Jesus is my Lord and Savior and I'm willing to witness to anyone and everyone that fact. All Saints Sunday. It's, one of, it's my favorite Sunday next to Easter in the whole year uh, of the Christian calendar because it reminds us of all that God has done through simple men and women like us. That's how the gospel spread. One story at a time. One invitation at a time. One person at a time telling another person, have you heard the story of this man, Jesus? Have you experienced 
his power and his presence in your life? Do you know that he can change you, that he can transform you, that he can help you turn your life around? Do you know that, my friend? Somebody said that to us at some point or we wouldn't be here. Somebody helped us to come to know him, and it's our job to help others to keep coming to know him until he decides to come again in glory and reign and rule here on this earth as he reigns even now in heaven. All Saints Sunday. You're the saints, my friends. You're the living saints. You're the, the living power, the living presence of Jesus Christ in this world today. And you should be empowered to know that. You should be empowered to know that you are witnesses to all that he is capable of doing, all that he has done and will do in your life and the life of anyone that comes to know him. Now, another thing about the early church was that they understood that communion was a very special time. And so they understood that communion was a rehearsal, so to speak, for that uh, marriage feast of the Lamb talked about in the book of Revelation. So that when you got together here on earth, you were sort of practicing for that meal that was yet to come. And they also understood that the great cloud of witnesses that had gone on to glory celebrated with you. They felt that the communion table was sort of the center of the universe at that time that communion was being celebrated. And it was almost like a great shaft that went up to heaven and gathered there around the top of it were all the men, the women, the children that had gone on to glory so that when we celebrated here, they were up there also celebrating and encouraging us, so to speak, to get it right, to get that love going to share that love with one another, to experience the grace that comes through the sacrament of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. They were experiencing firsthand what we could only experience through a glass dimly here on earth. And so today we're combining those affirmations of faith, those witnesses of faith, along with our witness and our preparation to come together and celebrate that meal that one day we all shall be gathered at and we the bride shall meet the groom and Jesus Christ shall reveal himself in a way that we can only now imagine. This is a special day. This is a day that we need to celebrate and to remember because it marks an important point in the life of these four young people. And it marks an important point in the life of our church because we are going to say that we will support them, that we will be there with them as they begin this long journey that will last for the rest of their lives. Many of us will not be here when their journey ends because ours will already have translated into glory. But while we're still here, we're that cloud of witnesses that surround them and help them on their journey, even as perhaps they might one day help us as they learn about God, as they encounter Jesus and share what they have discovered through prayer and study with us as well. We are God's family gathered in this place to celebrate a great event today. 